Hey, so I just wanted to go over some stuff for NVK variations that I didn't get to in the latest video, partially because I added some features right after I made the video. And then also some of it is a little bit more nuanced and I didn't get a chance to really explain it in a short four minute video. So yeah, if you wanna learn a little bit more, just stick around and we'll go through it. I'm just going to make a sound. I always go for sci-fi whoosh as my test sound. If you don't know what I just used, that's NVK great, but I imagine most of you watching this probably are aware of that by now. So I have the sound here. Um, I'll just turn it down a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Let's pitch it up. Cool. Um, let's trim it. I don't know why I'm bothering. This is just the big test sound. Okay, so we want to make variations of the sound. So I'm going to open up NVK variations. And the uh, first thing I wanted to show is just the playback. So when you're testing this stuff, let's say you have zero variations, the edit cursor moves to the beginning. And then with the script focused, you can use the space bar to play it. And even as you make adjustments with the pitch shift, the edit cursor will move to the beginning of that item. And that's just to make it easy to test stuff. So let's say I made a bunch of changes to this. Yeah, let's add a bunch of stuff here. I think pitch, pitch is probably like the biggest change. So if I play this back, there's my new sound, a little bit crazy. I'm gonna right click on the variation slider, which will randomize all the settings. So um, as I showed in the video, you can right click on just pitch if you only wanna randomize pitch or volume if you only wanna randomize volume. Um, but I'll right click on the variations one to randomize everything. So I can just do this until I find something I like. Um, right now I'm hearing a little bit too much pitch movement. So I'm gonna bring the envelope down. I suppose this all depends on what sound you're trying to make, of course. So that makes it really easy to preview. You can make an adjustment, press the space bar and hear your sound. And this also works for multiple variations. So if you change the amount of variations to let's say like four, now the edit cursor goes to the first variation. And that's just because you already know what your original sound sounds like. You generally don't need to demo it. So I'll play this back and make adjustments. And um, I made it so that as you're playing back, it will actually skip to the next variation. So if I just hit play, you can see it's actually skipping the silence between the variations, which is nice. Um, and now the edit cursor is over here. So we'll be playing this one, but if I move it again, it'll go back to the first one. And um, if you go into the settings here, you'll see the shortcuts for next variation and previous variation. So I have these set to F and D. So next variation, if I hit F, it will go forward and D will go backwards. So if you wanted to hear your original sound, you can use D to go to it and then F to go through the variations quickly. And if you're already playing back, you don't need to press play again. It will just skip to them. Um, so yeah, so that's a nice, uh, a nice feature. Um, and the other thing which I showed in the video, but uh, didn't get a chance to fully explain, it's just the item override. So the way it works is um, any setting you wanna override, i.e. not have it be affected by the script, you can just click to remove it. So this is offset. So if we had, let's say we had some offset here, I'll move this over to the side. So with some offset here, you can see it affecting everything, but let's say we wanted this layer here to always, always be in the same place not be affected by offset. So we can go to that layer and click on it. And now you can see the offsets on all those items are the same. So the other thing um, is that some of these settings actually have a right click option. So that would be variations. So if I right click on the variations, it turns orange and then it actually switch, switches to the opposite mode, which is chaos. These items will change to chaos mode, which means they basically have a random offset, which only really works for certain types of content and design, but it's there if you need it. And uh, let's say you were in chaos mode, everything's chaos. Uh, now, if I right click on this, it actually changes it back to the default mode. So it, it's kind of like it reverses it. Whereas if I turn it off by just clicking on it, now it goes to none, which means it's always gonna use the exact same variation. The other setting that this affects is pitch. That just shifts between play rate and shift mode. So if I right click on this, um, let's make it clear. So you can see here it's being pitch shifted by a certain amount. Uh, if you right click on it, then it's going to change to normal pitch shift mode. So yeah, that's item overrides. Um, and the other thing that's kind of cool is uh, 
this color variation setting. So I was using it in the video, but by default, all your items are gonna be the same color uh, as the original one, but this just makes a nice little rainbow there. So that is a useful setting as well. Sorry, I had to step out for a second there. Um, so there's one more setting I wanted to show, and that is the always reset variation amount setting. With presets, um, the number of variations actually get saved. And if you enable this, it's not gonna do anything until you close the script, but next time you open, when you go to a preset, it will change the number of variations to zero on load. So you might not want to have the variations set with the preset, and that's what that setting is there for. I guess the last thing is actually in the default tab, you have the option to save settings as default. So usually when you change stuff in the default preset, it actually resets every time. So if I close this and reopen it, you can see the settings are all reset. If you want to have default settings that are always loaded, let's say you just always want pitch shift, what you can do is make your changes and then right click, save settings as default. And now when I reopen the script, the uh, settings are loaded. So if you decide you don't want to do that, then all you have to do is right click and then say reset to factory default. And now it's back to the way it was before. All right. So that's just um, some more features that I didn't get to show. Uh, thanks for watching.